the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In the 30s and early 40s, most men and women asked themselves, what will I be doing when I'm 65 years old? Well, that's largely up to you and the decision you make right now. Opportunity for an important decision will be offered to you in our middle commercial. It tells about the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. This plan means exactly what it says. Financial independence in your 60s. Listen carefully to this important message from the Equitable Society coming in about 14 minutes. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Murder. Its title, The Tribal Shakedown. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation was selected for dramatization because it points out a very fundamental shortcoming in America's educational system. Despite the fact that our country spends vast sums of money on schools and teachers, millions of our people must be classified as uneducated, half-educated, or badly educated. Among the ranks of the uneducated and the half-educated, as you will see in tonight's file, Criminals find some of their ideal victims, people who are an easy mark for this or that racket. From the ranks of the badly educated are recruited the criminals themselves. For we must realize that education is more than mere book learning. Any education worthy of the name must include intelligent instruction in the ideals of good citizenship. It must teach us respect for the law and moral integrity in dealing with our fellow men. Remember, education is everybody's business, your business. Play a more active part in the drive for better education in your community. Join the Parent Teachers Association by doing your share to improve education standards in your district. You are making a real contribution in the never-ending war against crime. Tonight's FBI file opens on an Indian reservation in a western state. It is early morning as a young man enters the general store. He walks toward the long counter and greets the overalled, bewhiskered proprietor. Good morning. Oh, good morning, mister. I'd like to get some food. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. What kind? I guess I've got a little of everything on this list. Moving in around here? Only for a week or so. Well... I guess we can still have us a little chivalry to kind of make you welcome. Thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it every time we get new white folks in. I'm an Indian. Oh, go on now. <laughs> My name's Dr. Watonga. Well, what do you know? You know, I never would have took you for one. I think maybe I better buy my groceries someplace else. Oh, now, 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 now. You, you, you don't think I meant no offense. Why, I, I was just, just trying to make you welcome. If I all. was white. Oh, why, if it was anything. Why, you, you ask around, you like. I got more Indian friends than I got white ones. Sure. Stark's my name, Floyd Stark. Indians got me another name, though. Man with a big heart. Because I, you see, I... I give him so much credit. <laughs> I see. Now, uh, let's have that grocery list. Here. Where are you living, Doc? I took a shack up in the hills on the old Washita property. Well, it's too bad you never got to meet Washita. He was my uncle. Oh? Oh, well, I guess you know about his accident last week, hmm? I came out for the funeral. First suicide we had in the county in years. Mr. Stark, you know a man named John Latimer? Mm Mm-hmm. Why? 
My uncle mentioned his name in a couple of letters. Oh. He didn't like Latimer. Oh, I don't guess many do. You see, most folks are jealous of him. You know, the way they are when anybody strikes it good. Uh, tell me, Doc, you got more shopping to do in town? Yes, quite a bit. Well, leave your list if you like. Time you get back, why, things will be ready. Thanks. It will save me some time. Uh, you say he'll uh, be here a week or two? Yes. And you'll uh, you'll be seeing John Latimer. Well, nice shooting, John. Huh? Oh, hi, Floyd. You know, there's a two-penny deposit on each of them bottles, you know. Think I can afford it? Oh, I guess maybe. Something on your mind? Yeah, yeah. Young fella come in the store this morning. Well, she this nephew, he come out for the funeral. You know what he told me? Seems like the old man put your name in some letters that he sent the boy. What about it? Well, he was asking questions about you, and... When he left the store, I hear tell that he was pulling around asking other folks. Floyd, all anybody can tell him is I buy crops from a lot of Indians. This boy's a doctor. Who? What I've been telling you about. Well, she does near for you. Forget about him. Start thinking about Salazar. Not yet, John. You told me he owes you over a thousand dollars. Well, he does. But, uh, see, I, I'm for going easy. Why? Well, I like to wait till Washita's nephew stops being so, uh, so nosy. Floyd, last time I was in the city, I went to the circus. They had a tail there that wagged a whole dog. <laughs> I think that's the place for that kind of thing, don't you? Huh? You got 10% of this business. I'm the 90. Get it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just bring Salisaw out here for some cough syrup. Once we get control of his crop, we'll have the whole valley. Come in. Pardon me, I was looking for the district nurse, but... I'm I... Miss Craig. Oh. I... I guess I expected somebody in a white uniform. <laughs> Can I help you? I'm Dr. Watonga. Oh, hello. I've heard about you. Are you going to practice here? No, I'm in research. Indian life expectancy. Oh? Miss Craig, would it be much trouble to give me a typhoid shot? Well, not at all. Let's go in the other room. Been here long? Two years. Like it? Very much. Well, thank you. By the time you get your sleeve rolled up, I'll have the needle ready. Uh, if you'd like to use this lab for anything, you're welcome to it. Thanks very much. I'll only be here this trip for a week or ten days. Oh. Maybe you can help me on some other research I'm doing, though. On what? A man named John Latimer. You see, Juan Washita was my uncle. The, the Washita who committed suicide last week? Yes. He raised me. He sent me to medical school. I can't believe he'd have committed suicide. But the paper said he left a note. I know, I've got it. But I don't consider it proof. You see, I happen to know that Latimer has been stealing land from our people. My uncle tried to fight him. My uncle died. And, uh, now you're planning to fight him. Yes. I doubt that you'll get anywhere alone. I don't intend to. I've got to go into the city tomorrow for equipment. While I'm there, I'm going to tell this whole story to the FBI. <laughs> Mr. Taylor? Yes, that's right. I'm Dr. Watonga. You made a speech to our graduation class two years ago and said people should come to the police if they know about any crime. Shawnee Medical School, that was. Oh, yes, I remember. I know the FBI takes care of crime on the reservation, so I came to see you. Have a seat, Doctor, won't you? Thank you. Now, go on, please. A man named John Latimer is stealing our land from us. On the reservation? Yes. Well, Doctor, that's impossible. 
Nobody can transfer title to either tribal or allotted property. Let me tell you how Mr. Latimer works. Please do. Most farms on the reservation are small. One bad year and the farmers are in trouble financially. Uh -huh, I see. About five years ago, a man named Floyd Stark bought the general store and extended easy credit to the people. They'd never known anything like that. And pretty soon a lot of them owed more than they could pay, no matter how big the crop was. Uh -huh. Then Stark demanded payment. None of them had any money, but he told them where they could borrow it. Where was that? From a man who moved into the reservation about the same time Stark did. That's this man named John Latimer. Uh -huh. Latimer lent them the money all right, but in return they had to sign a contract with him agreeing to let him buy their entire crops at any price he set. And they've been living up to the contract? Yes. One of the men he lent money to was an uncle of mine named Juan Washita. Last month, my uncle went to Latimer and told him that unless he paid a fair price this year, my uncle was going to organize the other farmers, and they'd all refused to give Latimer anything. What was his answer to your uncle? Last week, my uncle was found dead. There was a gun in his hand and a suicide note on the table. Mm -hmm. Did you give any reason? Yes. The note said he was killing himself because he had advised his people to go back on their word and that Mr. Latimer was a true friend of the Indians, and how my uncle felt he couldn't face the others anymore. Sounds like your uncle was a rather moral man. Yes, he was, but the thing I don't understand is I got a letter this morning that he wrote to me the same day he died. Now, didn't you say that was last week? Yes, he, he sent the letter to the hospital where I was working back east. Oh, no, I see. The letter is full of my uncle's future plans for fighting Latimer, and it doesn't sound like a man about to commit suicide. Here's the suicide note. Thanks. And this is the letter. Look them over. Yes, I will, Doctor. My uncle was only one man, Mr. Taylor, and he's beyond help now, but the other farmers are still slaves of Latimer. Can't anything be done for them? Well, Doctor, I'll talk to my agent in charge. He'll put somebody on it. Would that be you? Maybe. Tell me, are you living on the reservation? Yes. I'm just returned. All right. Call me late this afternoon, Doctor. By that time, I'll have some word. John, where you been? Uh, in town. I've been plaguing the operators to find you. What for? That nephew of Washita's come back from the city. And he told me that he took himself a shack till spring. Where'd you see him? Right here in the store. He come in here asking a mess of questions. About me? Both of us. He found out someplace about all them Indians owing me big money and send them to see you. Well, that must have been why he came to see me then. When? He came by the house while I was out. If he comes back, send him over to my office. I'll straighten him out. <laughs> Special Agent Taylor. Dr. Watonga, Mr. Taylor. Oh, yes, Doctor. I've got some news for you. Will you be able to investigate Latimer? Well, not only him, but also your uncle's death. There's a chance he didn't commit suicide. What did you find? Well, I sent the suicide note in that letter he wrote you to our lab. The note is a forgery. And he was murdered? Maybe. In any event, it's enough to warrant having an autopsy performed. Mr. Taylor, Latimer's behind my uncle's death. I'm sure of that. Well, he's the number one suspect off of what you've told me... This doesn't sound like the work of an amateur. He isn't. Well, Washington reported they have no criminal record for anyone with that name. Of course, if we had his prints, we could pursue... Would it help if I got them? Oh, can you? I'll try. Mr. Taylor, I've come across something else since I got back out here. Oh, what? Latimer had to get a few of the farmers drunk before they'd sign the contracts. Can you get any of them to sign a statement? No, they won't talk about it. Since my uncle died, they're afraid of Latimer, but we may be able to prove it without them. No, how? It seems the liquor he gave them came out of a bottle marked cough syrup. One of the farmers gave me one he got at that time. Well, that's not worth too much, I'm afraid. There were a few drops left in the bottle. Could you have them analyzed at your laboratory? They might turn out to be whiskey. Well, even if they do, Latimer will deny giving it to him. That's so. Now, you bring the bottle in. We'll do the analysis anyway. I'll get you a report on it as soon as I can and be out to the reservation myself first thing in the morning. Mr. 
Mr. Latimer? That's right. I'm Dr. Watonga. Yes, doctor, I understand you called at my house today. I did. Sorry I wasn't in. I wanted to get hold of you before this. Tell you how bad I felt about your uncle. It was quite a shock. Must have been. I got another one today. You remember the suicide note my uncle left? Very well. I got word a little while ago that he didn't write it. The note was a forgery. That's hard to believe. Mr. Latimer, I wondered if you could help me. How? Find the person who did write it. Why, I'd like to, but where would you start looking? I thought you might know if my uncle had any enemies. No. No, I never heard anybody say a bad word about him. I went through his papers today. I came across a picture of my uncle and another man. I can't find anybody who can identify this person. I brought it with me. Hmm. Afraid I can't tell you who he is either. Uh, anything else I can do? Well, I'm not your doctor, so this is not medical advice, but if I were you, I'd be careful about the cough syrup I used. I don't understand. You distributed a few bottles to some of the farmers around here. I had what was left of one analyzed. Oh. It's illegal to bring whiskey onto the reservation. I buy that syrup at a drugstore in town, doctor, and I don't like your saying I did anything illegal. I didn't. There's nothing in the law about strong medicine. You seem to know the law quite well. I have to. I draw my own contract. You do your own shooting, too? Get out! And don't come back. I won't, Mr. Latimer. Not till I can prove you killed my uncle. return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official file of your FBI. But now, listen. Those are check writing machines at the home office of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Every month, checks go out to members who have paid up their Equitable Independent 60s plans. And here's Mr. Harvey Morris. You finished your payments last year, didn't you, Mr. Morris? That's so, Mr. Keating. I turned over my little store to my son. Now I've got nothing to do but have a good time. In other words, Mr. Morris, you're now cashing in on the three freedoms that go with an independent 60s plan. First, freedom from money worries and job worries. Financial independence. Uh, Mr. Keating, I'm still a man who gives to charity. I'll never be on the receiving end. Second, with an equitable independent 60s plan, you're free to live anywhere you please. We're staying right in my old hometown, but we spend our summers up in the pine woods of Maine. Third, freedom to do the things you've always wanted to do. I guess I'm sort of an inventor, Mr. Keating. And now that I can give it my full time, I really am enjoying myself. If I come up with anything good, you know who can take a bow? My equitable man. He's the one who explained the independent 60s plan to me. Showed me how pretty nearly anybody who really wants to can afford it. That's a fact. You don't have to earn big money to begin an equitable independent 60s plan. Ask your equitable representative to explain why you probably have a big head start towards independent 60s because of your social security and the life insurance you already own. Often only a small amount of additional insurance is all that's required. Two dollars a week did it for me. Friends, why not profit by Mr. Morris's experience? Phone your Equitable Society representative without delay. Or send a postcard, care of this station, to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Tribal Shakedown. From reading detective stories in which the mystery is solved by a brilliant amateur sleuth, many an otherwise sensible citizen gets the notion that he might have the makings of a star detective. This is a dangerous delusion, as tonight's case from the official FBI files definitely proves. Crime detection is a job for the experts, for experienced professionals backed by modern criminological laboratories. If you ever have reason to suspect that a crime has been committed, or is about to be committed, don't take chances. Call in your local law enforcement officials immediately. If this series of broadcasts were to accomplish nothing more than emphasize to all listeners 
not to run unnecessary risks in dealing with criminals, your FBI would feel it has made a most important contribution toward decreasing crime in this country. Tonight's file continues the following morning outside Dr. Watonga's cabin. Hello there, Doctor. Hello, Mr. Taylor. When did you arrive? I just got off the train. Came right out. I went to see Latimer yesterday. Well, after we talked? Yes. I told him about the suicide note forgery and asked him what he knew about it. He pretended to be shocked. I wish you hadn't told him. Why? Well, I wanted to get a sample of his handwriting. If he's on guard, that'll be a pretty tough thing to do. I'm sorry, Mr. Taylor. If he's in league with that man who runs the general store, uh, uh... Floyd Stark? Yeah, Stark. They're working together. Latimer's undoubtedly warned him not to throw any handwriting samples around now, so... Hey, wait a minute. And Latimer must write on his checks if we find out where he keeps his accounts. Oh, in the City National Trust. Oh, how do you know? Farmers told me about getting their loans by check. Mm. Well, I think I can get a court order to examine his account. Oh, uh, do you get his fingerprints? They should be on the picture in this envelope. I wiped it clean before taking it to his office. All right. I'll let the lab go to work on it. You going to check on Stark? Know where he keeps his account? I saw him coming out of the bank here yesterday. All right, I'll try to get an okay to check his records, too. When do you think you'll be back? Sometime tonight. Apples just come in. Yep. They look good. Yeah, help yourself, John. Yeah. I want you to call the doctor tonight. Tell him you'll talk. Hey, John, now listen, I, I ain't in no mood for Call joking. him, call him. Tell him to come over here. You'll give him all the information he wants about me. But, uh... Tell him the place is locked. But the key's under the mat. As he's letting himself in, blast him. Yeah. You want me to kill him? He can't prove anything if he's dead, can he? No. He'll still have the key in his hand. Your story is the place was locked. He got a key someplace and was breaking in. I want to hear from you tonight. And I want to hear the job's been done. Craig? That's right. Miss Craig, my name is Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Oh, yes, Dr. Watonga told me about you. Oh, I was looking for the doctor. Didn't you see him in the street? No, I didn't. Well, he just left. Well, it's rather important I find him. I've got some news you'll want to hear. I wish I could help you, but you see, we were sitting here when he got a call. He left as soon as he finished talking. He got a call at this hour? Yes. Do you know who from? No, but he was excited about it. Miss Craig, may I use your phone? Surely. Thanks. Let's hope the operator knows where that call came from. Hello? That you, John? Yeah, Floyd. I did it. He dead? Sure is. Good. Yeah. Come in that door and I let go. That's fine, Floyd. Now just call the sheriff's office, tell him what happened, and as soon as I hey, can. Hey, John, get... listen to this. It'd make me feel a heap better if you if you'd come by. Come by the store? Yeah, I, I'd like you to be a witness. You don't need any witnesses. Now, John, listen. I'm I'm kind of shaky, and it's uh, it'd be better for you to to say that you was passing when it happened. All right, I'll be right there. Coming, John, coming. Come on in. Don't lock it. No? He unlocked it before you shot him, Floyd. Leave it that way. Let's go see the body. 
Uh, this way. Why'd you drag him back here? He didn't. Huh? You did mean my body, didn't you, Mr. Latimer? What is this? John, it ain't my fault. He's telling the truth. He was all set to kill me when I let myself in that front door. But a friend of mine learned that Mr. Stark was your partner. That's a lie. My friend found me just before I arrived here at the store. He told me this might be a trap. Yeah, and he... he so he, he came in the back way, surprised me, and took the gun. Then I persuaded him to tell me about my uncle's murder. And then you had him call me and brought me into the trap. That's right. Well, this gun says it won't work. Doctor, I'd like you to do some writing. Such as? Put down that you killed yourself after shooting Stark. And that you shot him because he admitted murdering your uncle. Sorry, Mr. Latimer. Start writing. Hold it, Latimer. Right. Okay, Carl, I've got his gun. Who are you? That friend I told you about. I'm also a special agent of the FBI, Latimer. You and Stark here are both under arrest. <laughs> John Latimer was tried in federal court for murder on an Indian reservation and sentenced to a term of life imprisonment. Floyd Stark was tried for being an accessory after the fact and given a 20-year sentence. Special Agent Taylor was able to establish the fact that John Latimer and Floyd Stark were partners through his examination of Latimer's checking account. Those records revealed that each time he made a deposit for himself, he drew a check to Stark's credit, each time for exactly 10%. From the writing on the checks, the FBI crime lab determined that Latimer was the one who wrote Juan Washita's forged suicide note. And from fingerprints found on the photograph, the identification section came forth with a past criminal record in his true name. And so another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation was closed. Another case in which your FBI protected not only the lives of people, but also their basic freedom. Now, two final questions on the cost of the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. Well, Mr. Keating, I'm just 29 years old. Should I figure on starting one of these plans when I get to be about 40? No. Start right away and your yearly cost will be much lower. Well, suppose my salary goes up as I grow older. Can I increase the amount of my Independent 60s plan? That's possible any time. After all, the amount of your Independent 60s plan is strictly up to you at all times. It depends on your present income and future needs. Your equitable man will be glad to work it out with you or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, hijacking. Its title, The Roaring Twenties. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Kenneth Ross, Lamont Johnson, Alice Reinhardt, and Victor Rodman. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Roaring Twenties on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for A Life in Your Hands, starring Lee Bowman, when it comes your way next over most of these same stations. America is sold on ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>